Okay, so what does Digital Forensics stand, uh, stand for? So according to Wikipedia, it's a branch of forensic science uh, and, and encompassing the recovery and investigation of material found in digital device, often in uh, relation to computer crimes. Well, um, uh, we are not just about uh, computer or cyber crimes uh, because uh, uh, there are two aspects. The crime can be indeed a high tech, Let's say it's cyber uh, fraud or uh, your identity stealing uh, online. That's indeed the, the, the high tech, so computer, com uh, computer crime, as Wikipedia says. However, a digital device or internet can be also used as an infrastructure for an uh, offline crime. So you you don't use uh, so, so some 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 bad guy don't use uh, the digital device to commit a crime but there is a silent witness of the crime say it someone did uh, stole something or killed something and uh, they have a iphone an iphone or an android phone in, in their pocket so the device is recording the location of the persons uh, and so uh, it is possible to uh, prove basing on the uh, details stored on the device that this person has been uh, at the um, crime scene at a given time, right? So that's uh, not a, absolutely not a high tech crime, but digital forensics is involved. And by the way, uh, there is a saying among the digital forensic investigators that there is no more uh, regular or non-digital uh, crimes because everyone now has a device so in every or in almost all investigations there is a digital device involved even if it's not used to commit a crime so uh, another um, reason to have digital forensics is that uh, there is more and more crimes which go go from offline to online so it's much safer for a criminal to commit an online crime than offline so offline crime uh, involves some risks uh, while online you're pretty safe but of course you need some more brain to commit an online crimes and in many cases not all uh, another reason to have digital forensic why we have it more and more uh used it's uh, uh um the fact that there are much much more devices nowadays so uh, a regular person has a smartphone. Uh, I, I have two smartphones, one, one Android and one iPhone. I also have some uh, playback devices. I have some uh, a computer and a laptop. Uh, I have Fitbit on my wrist. So um, uh, the, there is um, uh, much more data about uh, uh, every person because there is much more devices than before. What kind of crimes digital forensics uh, deals with? So there, there is a huge list. Uh, it's, it's not comprehensive list uh, shown on the screen. Of course, uh, there is an online fraud and theft of money, money laundering, blackmailing. Of course, it's uh, uh, selling drug or fake medicine. Uh, things like uh, even ch child pornography or harassment. Of course, everyone uh, uh, received spam in their um, in their um, oops sorry uh, in their mailbox uh, and things like uh, piracy, botnets, uh, DDoS attacks, and even uh, terrorism or espionage, uh, which is done online and uh, uh, around year 2000 something we got a big change in uh, digital forensics so on my screen you can see asian uh, comparison uh, of ancient ages and ancient i mean before 2000 uh, well maybe 2005 2003 and after so before in uh, ancient or golden age of digital forensics. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll explain why it's called golden. Um, so before we had a small variety of devices, it, it uh, would be just uh, a computer 
or maybe an, a, a laptop. You, you can see on the right of my screen, there is a, some a, ancient laptop. And uh, uh, you, so what you do uh, to investigate the device for uh, some digital evidence inside. So you just pull a plug, so switch the device off. You take the hard drive out of the computer or the, the laptop. Back then, uh, all the uh, um, hard drives were uh, detachable, even from laptops. It's not anymore, in, uh, as you know. And then you go to your favorite hex viewer to see the files and folders and contents, and you do whatever uh, you would like to find. Typically, you are looking for emails and documents. That, that's actually it. So that's why it was called a, a golden age of digital forensics, because there was data. It was not encrypted. It was. Uh, um, even if what it was deleted, you you were able to uh, undelete it to recover it uh, from uh, that uh, regular hard drive, and there was uh, well a couple of tools to use. Uh, uh, so every case would be the more or less the same as previous uh, from the uh, technology point of view. Of course, the contents could be different, but uh, the process is this, uh, more or less the same. So now. It's all about devices, starting about the uh, year 2000, uh, 2003, 2004. So what we have now, it's, it's not just computers. Uh, it's also uh, modern laptops with not detachable hard drives. It's tablets and big servers. We have uh, a lot of different kinds of uh, smartphones, uh, mostly based on Android and uh, iOS, but also there was a Windows phone, there, there is Blackberry. And uh, even Androids, there are a lot of different uh, flavors of Androids. So we have feature phones. We still have phones with buttons, uh, which are kind of special. There was a, uh, there is um, uh, GPS navigators, car computers, uh, MP3 players, drones, uh, 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 and things like smart homes, like Google Glass, like smart watches, and so on. Every device is different. And that uh, the process is not uh, straightforward anymore. A lot of uh, things to know about the peculiarity of each device. And you cannot just pull a plug and do dead box analysis. Dead box is uh, when uh, uh, when you just uh, take the hard drive and uh, uh, plug it into your investigation computer. Uh, so uh, you cannot uh, do the dead box analysis with many of those devices anymore. Sometimes you cannot uh, even image the device. Say it, uh, for modern laptops, you cannot uh, detach the hard drive just because there is no hard drive. It's uh, it's on board. Uh, it's on board memory uh, device inside uh, inside the laptop. Mobile phones you cannot. Uh, uh, really image the mobile phone with the unknown password or screen lock. Well, you can with uh, some expensive hardware and with some uh, on some kinds of devices. Uh, but there is no guarantee uh, anymore because uh, there are uh, hundreds and thousands of models. Not all of them are vulnerable. And uh, there is no official way to get the full contents of a mobile device. So you have to hack the phone at this, uh, at this point of time. So that's uh, uh, why the golden era of digital forensics uh, ended. Uh, even for real, uh, um, not real, but even for um, regular uh, uh, computers, it's it became much uh, harder. Say it, if you are investigating something, uh, some I don't know security breach or um, some corporate incident, and you have one hundred of uh, computers in the office. Uh, each computer has a standard, say two three terabytes uh, drive. So you really cannot image those. Uh, uh, three uh, terab uh, three terabyte per uh, 100 uh, pieces quickly. Uh, you know that previously the digital forensic process was that you do image uh, to preserve data, right? So now 
uh, 300 terabytes, uh, it, it will take a lot of time. And then you will have to proceed uh, to, uh, to analyze those 300 terabytes. So you will have to have a really powerful computer or a, a net, network of computers proceeding uh, those data just to find uh, some uh, small document or some small chat about the incident. So it's, it's pretty challenging. Current tools for digital forensics are kind of specialized. So you, you probably know things uh, like NK, FTK, UFAT, X or Y. They are pretty specialized on either computer or mobile forensics. So you have to have uh, multiple tools in your tool set. And then you will have to friend them together if you have a case with both computer devices and mobile devices and other kind of devices shown on previous screens. So yeah, that's uh, uh, at least two tools uh, required for a digital forensic unit, whether it's a police or a corporate company. And in real life, they actually have dozens of tools just because one tool cannot be a silver bullet, uh, you have to, sometimes uh, the tool just crashes on some tricky data, other tool, it doesn't crash uh, and vice versa in the next case. So that's why uh, it's pretty expensive uh, thing to, uh, to have a good tool set. Okay, so let, let me um, go through some challenges in digital forensics, which we have nowadays. So there are a number of obstacles. First of all, exponential growth of number of cases. Why is it? Because of one of uh, uh, things mentioned on my first slides, because everyone has a device so, and not, not one. So now uh, versus older days, uh, now, every crime is, uh, has some digital device involved. So in many cases, uh, the digital forensic investigator will have to analyze uh, one or multiple device, uh, devices um, in a, a more, more or less every case. That's why the numbers are growing. And uh, of course, uh, a, a amount of people having uh, more than one device is growing. Exponential growth of uh, volumes of data. Well, um, you, you might remember days when we had a few megabytes hard drives. Now, it's not a surprise to find uh, one or two terabyte hard drives. In my home computer, I have... Uh, uh, eight terabytes drive plus uh, four terabyte uh, plus uh, SSD, which is uh, half terabyte. So in total, it's it's more than uh, ten terabytes in just one computer. Uh, well, maybe that's kind of the specialized computer because I'm a, a tech guy. But uh, again, uh, even regular people, it's it's not expensive to buy one or two terabyte uh, hard drive. So that uh, um, leads to lags in the investigation. What we heard from our customers, uh, and Belksoft mostly have uh, uh, law enforcement customers, that lags between uh, a, a seizing a device and analyzing it can be up to one year, and in some countries even bigger, just because digital forensic investigator is uh, very busy. So uh, if, if it's uh, bigger uh, than uh, one year, longer than one year, it may even break the, uh, the right uh, of, of a suspect for the timely investigation. So this is a big problem. And stuff amount doesn't follow. It's, it's one more uh, uh, challenge. So you have the growth of cases, uh, a very steep growth of cases, but amount of investigators doesn't follow the same rule. Well, maybe it's linear uh, increase, but not exponential, of course. So they have more um, cases, uh, more data, but uh, more or less the same amount of stuff. Strong encryption is also a big challenge. And not uh, only, uh, well, let me skip the bitcoins, but uh, not only 
uh, because um, it's strong, but also because it's uh, um, commoditized. Uh, uh, commoditized. So uh, everyone has, uh, well, not everyone, but uh, many of us have encryption, even without switching it off or tuning, uh, switching it on or tuning it on your devices. So if you have an iPhone, you already have strong encryption because your data inside iPhone is encrypted. And with uh, modern Androids, it's the same. Uh, when you have um, a, a modern laptop, uh, you can have B uh, BitLocker on it. Uh, and uh, if in previous times it was um, kind of uh you you wouldn't uh, want to switch on bitlocker or similar encryption because it it really slows down the performance of the system now it's more or less transparent so you don't uh, see the decrease in performance in, on modern laptops which makes uh, many people uh decide to to employ encryption so now what a digital forensic investigator can do if they have uh, iPhone, an iPhone or an encrypted uh, hard drive with BitLocker. Uh, with um, modern encryption, it's uh, almost hopeless to find, to brute force a password. So that's a, a huge problem with digital forensics. Social networks and uh, I believe clouds yeah, uh, are also the, the problem because the data go from the device to the cloud, uh, both social networks and other cloud services uh, like Google Drive, like uh, Dro Dropbox, like uh, you name it. Um, they, they tend to store data on their servers. So now you would like to investigate a Facebook chat of a suspect. Uh, and uh, you take the, the device and there is no history just because uh, the Facebook chat is not stored uh, inside the computer. There, there is something stored on a mobile application for face, Facebook Messenger, for example, but it's not the entire history. It's just uh, a cache, cached some uh, uh, recently uh, chats being cached uh, on the device. So that's uh, also the problem that data goes from the uh, local device to some remote uh, server. And the uh, investigator even doesn't know uh, what is the country where this data is stored. Say it, you are in Africa and you're investigating fa Facebook chat. And with the 99% uh, uh, of uh, probability, this chat is stored somewhere in the United States. So how do you uh, see the computer holding all this data? You'll have to communicate with the US police and uh, um, you, you'll uh, ask for the Facebook return based on the search warrant. And there is no guarantee that you'll get it, right? You, uh, the, your request can be declined. Right, so that's again why the golden era of digital forensics uh, now uh, behind, and also of course skilled criminals, as with the digital forensics, as with uh, regular crimes, skilled criminals are always one step ahead. Uh, so we have um, we have to follow what they uh, in, uh, what they. Um, uh, what new types of crimes or what new vulnerabilities they found uh, we we have to uh, we have to follow okay let me start with uh, some uh, more detailed explanations of uh, those points uh, what kind of uh, challenges we now have in digital forensics and incident investigation so i am uh, I most of the time I mention digital forensics, but more or less the same things apply to incident response. So if you are a corporate guy and you are investigating uh, uh, something, what has some incident happened, whether it was a hacking attempt or blackmail or uh, internal harassment or stealing of your business secrets, uh, that's also 
uh, being investigated with the same methods, uh, with the same software, same hardware as digital forensics. So when I say digital forensic, uh, you can also add, automatically add incident response. So that's that's the same. So data acquisition uh, is a, a problem nowadays for both digital forensics and incident response. For mobile device acquisition, uh, you probably know that there is a um, notion of uh, physical uh, acquisition and logical acquisition. Physical is when you have the entire device, device contents, including all the system data, all the unallocated space, all the deleted data, and so on. And for um, iPhones, it's not possible since, I believe, iPhone version 4 uh, long ago. Uh, you cannot really have the physical acquisition of an uh, iPhone. So um, probably there is a theoretical uh, a possibility to do that with uh, uh, chip off or something like that. But uh, it, it doesn't make any sense because uh, everything is encrypted and the keys are stored on separate chip on the in, inside the secure enclave. So even if you can do that, uh, there is uh, no practical uh, benefit from having this physical uh, image. For Androids, well, you can still do physical acquisition on chip devices without encryption employed. But um, actually, expensive models, modern models, latest Android versions are encrypted. So you can do chip off uh, or you can root the device uh, and get the access to the uh, data, but um, in uh, uh, for expensive newer models, it also doesn't make any sense. There is also something called logical acquisition. When you can acquire a, a backup, a standard backup, or maybe a copy of uh, all the files without uh, unallocated space or uh, deleted files. But again, that's... Um, that's an issue. It it will require a knowledge of the passcode. So, uh, if you have, if it's not yours, iPhone said, if uh, if you are to investigate an iPhone of someone else and you do not know the passcode, in most of the cases, uh, you will not uh, succeed. So th th there are some. Uh, services, some ex very expensive hardware, which try to brute force uh, the passcode. Uh, but uh, without 100% guarantee, and in many cases, uh, in some cases, you'll have to send the device to some other country for the investigation and so on. If you do, if you try to do this locally in your uh, law enforcement laboratory or inside your corporation, um, it's it's quite hard. Not all information is available, so you'll not get the deleted data in most of cases, with some small exceptions. And uh, if you are doing the standard backup, it just contains almost nothing. Uh, um, if you if we say about iTunes backup or ADB backup for Androids. Uh, they contain less and less data with each release state. There is no uh, chat data, no health data, um, and so on. No emails, for example. So if uh, something is deleted inside a mobile device, uh, it's deleted uh, uh, immediately and forever. So you cannot recover it with some small exceptions of SQLite databases, which I'll cover a little bit later. Uh, I mentioned chip off. Uh, so what is a chip off? Chip off is uh, um, the way to copy data from the mobile device um, by unsoldering, uh, 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 unsoldering the chip, uh, memory chip from the device. So that's a destructive way of getting data. So you 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 unsolder the chip from the device. Device will not work anymore. So your uh, suspect or uh, your employee will be unhappy about that, of course. But in many cases, it's the only way to uh, pass through the passcode and um, to get the data. So uh, there is the, the method, and it's it's uh, pretty widely used, especially by by law enforcement. But it's quickly dying due to the encryption, which is switched on by default, which I already covered.
JTAG. JTAG is another way to get inside the device, and it, it was pretty popular with uh, 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 Microsoft's uh, uh, Windows mobile fo phones, Windows phones, because they used to have this JTAG um, uh, output, which could be used not only for the diagnostics, which is it was actually aimed for, but also uh, for in digital forensic investigations to dump all the data from the device. But uh, at this point, not many phones have this option. Okay, uh, what if we try to uh, brute force a lock screen for mobile device? Well, um, vendors also struggle with it. Uh, you know that for Apple, you can tune your iPhone to erase all the information upon 10 unsuccessful attempts. Some other device may give you 15. Uh, you may also uh, uh, hope that uh, this option is not switched on, but th that's a huge risk. Say it for my phone, I of course tuned it to erase uh, everything uh, upon 10 attempts. And there is no way to reset uh, the counter at least in regular iPhone mode. So uh, uh, you cannot uh, really reset this uh, without the expensive hardware. And um, even if there is no uh, erasing of the data uh, uh, upon 10 unsuccessful attempts, the manufacturer uh, do the increasing timeout. So uh, the next time you uh, you are allowed to enter the passcode would be in uh, 10 minutes and one hour and 24 hours. So uh, even if you are lucky to find the, the phone which is not tuned to erase everything, uh, the timeout effectively prevents brute force because of uh, uh, it, because it is increasing. Well, some good news. I, I'm speaking about bad news most of my presentation so far, but there are some uh, good news as well. Um, there is a new generation of uh, jailbreaks, routing and acquisition types basing on uh, uh, latest found vulnerabilities. Uh, Say for iOS, uh, there is uh, something called Checkmate uh, and Checkrain jailbreaks. There are uh, agent-based approach uh, to get a full file system copy, uncover jailbreak adopted to 13.5, uh, one of the most recent iOS versions, and so on. And Belkasoft, uh, my company, uh, has a pretty solid digital forensic tool called Belkasoft Evidence Center, which has both uh, uh, well support for Checkmate and uh, Checkrain and Uncover, and it has agents, and we can uh, sometimes, based on something called lockdown files, we can acquire uh, the backup of iPhone even without knowing the passcode. And with the checkmate vulnerability, you can also acquire some data, uh, if, even though um, um, most of the user data uh, without the passcode would be encrypted, but you still can acquire some data such as system data, pictures, uh, Wi-Fi connections, list of applications on the iPhone, and so on. So there are there are some good news, uh, and the same for Androids. Um, uh, there are basing on uh, manufacturer. There are some. Uh, ways to get inside uh, Androids. I will not cover them in my presentation today. It's kind of um, uh, too uh, technical, probably, for introduction, introductory presentation. But um, the, uh, we can do something. Well, the conclusion is uh, that everything goes to the direction of uh, the stricter uh, security and safety of the data of uh, users uh, of mobile devices. So I, I, I would guess that in a few years it would, will not be possible or hardly possible to acquire anything from a locked smartphone when you don't have a passcode or when your suspect uh, or uh, corporate uh, employer for co involved in corporate incident, if they are not collaborative, it would be hard 
to get inside a smartphone. And yeah, I'm sorry, cannot do anything about that. So that's a tendency. Well, table, tablets, desktops, uh, laptops, device acquisition. If what if we image a hard drive? Uh, first of all, uh, if you would like to image the hard drive from the, the device. There should be a hard drive, right? So you 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 should take something out of the device to image it in a, in an imaging hardware. Uh, if it's a built-in or flash memory, you cannot really uh, do that in a non-destructive way. So you'll have to uh, to do the imaging on a live device. So you have to switch it on. You have to log in, and again you'll have to know the password, right? So if you even if you do have a password, login and password, uh, it could be okay for corporate investigation, but for uh, for criminal investigation, it's typically not allowed to do so-called live uh, live box. Remember, I mentioned dead box. Dead box when you switch the device off, you take the hard drive out of the device and you plug it to the uh to your investigation machine uh, typically through a, a right blocker device and live box when you just switch the the original device and do something on it so that's a big no-no in a digital forensic in a cri criminal investigation because you are going to introduce some artifacts into the live system and your uh, conclusions will be invalidated in the court should you go to court with uh, whatever you found, right? So there should be a hard drive to get it out of the device. Uh, the, the, there is an issue with the modern uh, tablets and laptops. Well, with desktops, it's less an issue so far, but with desktops, uh, SSD is an issue. So uh, SSD, you know that uh, there is a huge difference between hard drives typical magnetic hard drives and SSD drives, which is a solid state drives. Uh, on solid state drives, you are an, uh, unable to recover deleted data because uh, uh, thanks to um, their, the way they work, they delete, uh, they really delete deleted data. You know that hard, on hard drives, in, on magnetic hard drives, when you delete data, the data is not actually deleted. It's just marked as deleted. They could be overwritten uh, more or less immediately, but they could also stay there for years. Some data could be recovered uh, years after it was deleted uh, on from hard drive. But with SSDs, it's not the case. Belkasoft has an article of uh, on SSD forensics. It, it was written. Uh, and last updated, I believe, in 2016, but uh, it's still actual. Nothing has changed. So if you go to belkasoft.com slash articles, you'll find uh, the SSD forensics article. And there is uh, uh, things uh, discussed about SSD drives like uh, Garbage, uh, like trim technology, garbage collection, over provisioning, uh, and other things which make uh recovery of deleted data almost impossible and chip off will not work with ssds why because uh, uh the, because of encryption involved uh, with the ssds first of all and second uh, even if there is no encryption uh, ssds uh for ssds only the controller of the ssd knows the mapping the, the how the files are stored. Of course, they are not stored continuously. So to combine pieces of uh, data into, into the single file, you should need the controller, which is uh, uh, hidden inside the SSD. So we, if you do the chip off, you'll just get a pile of data, a, a, a big image with some data, which is not sorted by the file. And only SSD controller, which you do not use whilst the chip off, uh, only the SSD controller knows the correct order. Of course, you can do something. You can do. Uh, you can find some smaller data like URLs, like maybe a particular chats, but you will not be able to recover the entire picture, the entire video, the entire database uh, when you don't know the sector order. So that's why uh, chip off will not work for SSDs. BitLocker, yeah, 
you can uh, if you have an image of a hard drive of a computer uh, which is uh, encrypted uh, with the bitlocker again you'll get uh, some pile of data which is useless because uh, when you don't have the password you will not be able to decrypt it and you will not be able to brute force uh, the encryption because bitlocker has a, a pretty strong uh, encryption inside uh, what can help you here, at least with uh, a bit locker, is uh, memory analysis. So if you find the device, uh, the computer or a laptop, or maybe if it's tablet, if it's a Microsoft tablet, uh, first of all, you need to do the memory dump. So your volatile or RAM memory. Um, because it may contain something interesting. For example, decryption keys for BitLocker or PGP or TrueCrypt, VeraCrypt, and so on. Uh, besides, mem RAM memory may contain some other stuff like, say, it, uh, uh, recent Facebook chats or recent WhatsApp chats made with uh, the desktop version, uh, uh, browser version of WhatsApp. You can find some other interesting things like, uh, recently viewed pictures and so on so that's why memory dump uh, is important but of course you should be able to make a dump which uh, means that you must uh, find the computer unlocked or someone helps you to unlock it because it's not possible to make memory dump without being locked into the system um, well, I, I will not cover tablets. Uh, just go to belkso.com slash articles and find imaging uh, SSD and eMMC drives. Uh, so eMMC uh, can can be found inside tablets. And uh, they're kind of the same uh, as SSDs, the same problems. So just go to Belksoft website and find the particular article about this particular issue.